Hey guys, Victor here, coming at you again with another retro deck profile for the September 2011 format. Today's deck is going to be Ultimate Offering Gadgets. And for those of you that don't know, the goal of this deck is basically to abuse Ultimate Offering to normal summon as many gadgets that you can, and then ultimately overlay them into Xyz monsters to OTK your opponent. Uh, this video is pretty much going to mark the start of me getting into like the more degenerate side of the type of decks that you could play in this format. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the deck profile. So starting off with the monsters, we're going to be playing three green gadget, three yellow gadget, and three red gadget. So unlike most gadget decks during this format that played 2-2-2 ratio, we're going to max out on every single gadget because it's extremely important to be able to open at least one with ultimate offering. And even then, uh, opening multiples is really good, especially if you get hit by effect Veiler, for example, because if the first one gets Veilered, no big deal. You just drop the second one, and then you just continue on with your merry way to OTK your opponent. And then, after that, we're going to be playing three Karakuri Watchdog MDL313 Saizan. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be our main tuner of the deck, because even though we typically want to only Xyz Summon, being able to synchro summon in this type of deck gives us so many other options and dimensions that weren't really possible before. And this will be the main tuner that we play because of the fact that it's level 4, which means that we can synchro it with any gadget. And then we can bring out things like Stardust Dragon, Beredo, um, Scrap Dragon, whatever, you name it. Uh, this card's invaluable and goes a long way in helping you win the game. And then we're still not done with the Karakuri engine though, as we're also going to be playing Karakuri Soldier MDL 236 Nisamu. Uh, this is pretty much just like a body to have because it's a level 4 that floats. So if your hand's a little bit weak, you just set this one uh, and then it floats into one of your, either your Saizons or your Karakuri Komachi MDL 224 Nanishi, which is your final Karakuri tuner. Uh, we only play one of this because honestly, our focus isn't on normal summoning extra Karakuris. Um, it's to summon our, our gadgets. But this is a nice target to help you go into level 7s if the situation comes up. Or you can special summon it off Barreto as well. Um, it's just a nice card to have in general. And then after that, we're just going to be playing two hand traps. So two Effect Veiler and two Maxi. Uh, not much to say. They're pretty much staple in most decks. Um, yeah. But with that, that's the main monster lineup. And now we can move on to the spell portion of the deck. When it comes to the spell cards, we're going to be playing three Pot of Duality. Uh, what can I say? This card's incredibly useful in this type of deck as it's able to thin out any key resources you need. So whether that's the ultimate offering, a gadget monster, or protection for your gadget monsters and offering, this card pretty much does it all. And you honestly don't even really care about the special summoning restriction because this deck is more than capable of OTKing or just having massive board presence to where the turn after you're more than able to win against your opponent. And then after that, we're going to be playing two Mystical Space Typhoons. Um, if you've seen any of my other deck profiles, you know I really am not a fan of this card in this format. Um, but I, uh, I elected to play two Mystical Space Typhoons because I am not playing Heavy Storm. As I don't think Heavy Storm is actually that great in this deck. Because you either have it turn one, wherein you can't do anything. And every time that it would be live, it's kind of useless because that means you wouldn't have Ultimate Offering live. If that makes sense. And... If you don't have ultimate offering, you've already lost the game because this deck's goal is to get to ultimate offering as soon as possible. So that's why I like to play two MSTs and no heavy. But I am playing the one Dark Hole and the one Reborn because they're staples, obviously. But in addition to that, we're going to be playing one Pot of Avarice, which is pretty much an insta-win button, especially late into the game, as it's able to recycle all your gadgets or Karakuris or extra deck monsters, whatever you may need, and then you draw two and you get all your resources back. Uh, yeah, this card's just incredible. And there's no reason not to play it in this. But there is one more spell card that we're playing, and that's Limiter Removal. Uh, I honestly think this card's really funny <laughs> in this type of deck, especially because you're able to swarm the field with your gadgets. And then thanks to Limiter Removal, just five normal summons uh, pretty much means that you won the game unless your opponent has a Gores or a Trag or a Battle Fader, because every single gadget gets over 2k, so you're going to be able to OTK your opponent incredibly easily. Um, this card's a little bit hard to use, so yeah, if you can't guarantee like game, don't use it, or just, I don't know, it's, 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 it's weird honestly, because I know it seems like really simple on the surface, just drop it in your monsters are big, right? But there are definitely times where you, this card just straight up backfires because you don't expect something like the Trag or the Gores, so just be cautious with that. 
And with that, that's the spell lineup, and we can finally move on to the traps. Now that we're finally on the traps, I can talk about the Heart and Soul of the deck being three ultimate offering. You pretty much want to get access to this card as soon as possible, so if you reveal it off a of duality, this is going to be your main target, especially if you already have like a gadget in hand. Even if you have one ultimate offering in hand, you still want to get the second one as like insurance to ensure that you can actually like consistently get it off. And just be aware that ultimate offering did have an errata at this time, and I believe the most recent text for it would be the DT version, which pretty much states that during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, you can pay 500 life points to normal summon or set a monster. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind when playing with this card. Uh, it's <laughs> it's really funny and it's like just really degenerate if it does resolve and you're able to OTK your opponent. So yeah, not much to say, it's just broken card is broken. And to protect the broken card, we're gonna be playing two Dark Bribe uh, this is purely to protect protect it if you can um, yeah negate a spell or trap make your opponent draw a card just a good card for this type of deck and then in addition to that we're gonna be playing two solemn warning with the one solemn judgment um, I know life points are a heavy cost to pay in this deck because each offering summon takes 500 life points so you have to be really smart with when you warning and solemn judgment uh, you can't just do it willy-nilly so just take that into consideration and they're easily honestly the most cuttable cards in this deck uh so if you want to play like more cards just to protect your ultimate offering like a third dark bribe curse seal the forbidden spell magic jammer whatever uh you can but i feel like honestly these these two or these three are still more than valid enough to main deck and after that we're going to be playing the one torrential the one mirror force, the one trap death shoot. Uh, death shoot is actually a little bit more important in this deck than it is in most other decks because of the fact that it's able to give you info about your opponent's hand. And so what you're always gonna typically wanna aim for this card are cards such as Gores or Trigodia, Battle Fader that just completely stop your battle phase. If you can get rid of those and just ensure that your normal summons are gonna resolve, um, yeah, you've literally just won the game right there. And then lastly, we're going to be playing the one Starlight Road because it's Starlight Road and you want to be able to protect your monsters and your spells and traps from mass removal like other Heavy Storms, Dark Holes, Mirror Force, Torrential, etc. And with that, that's the main deck. It's 40 cards and we can finally go on to the extra deck. So kicking off the extra deck, we're going to be playing three Kari Kari Burrito. Uh, the method of which extra deck monsters you use entirely depends on what you open in your hand. So if you start off with any tuners, whether it be Nanishi or Sizon, you're going to want to go the pretty much the synchro route but if you only open up gadgets then you're going to be tend to going only for the uh exes route um but yeah um the synchro route is i guess technically better than the exes route because every single monster is a machine so you have synergy with your uh limiter removal and every single monster is going to be 2600 or higher minimum uh and plus the Burrito engine pretty much just like self-fulfills, right? Because when you special summon it, or when you synchro summon it, you can special summon any Karakuri monster from your deck. So you just keep bringing out uh, Saizons or Nanishis with your gadgets that you just keep infinitely adding. And yeah, it just gets out of control really fast for your opponent. But in addition to the three Burritos, we're only going to be playing one Burray. And that's because we only play the one Nanishi. So we don't really need more than one. But um, yeah, just, just having access to this particular engine helps boost the deck's power way more and if like i said if you open a tuner you go for this one and if you don't you go for the exes and typically um whichever engine you go with first uh the backup is still just as good to get the job done in case it doesn't succeed and then after that we're going to be playing one scrap dragon uh this is one of the few cards that you can play that helps ensure that you're able to get over cards such as spirit reaper marshmallow etc because this deck really does suffer against them or even just floaters in general, like Pyramid Turtle, Giant Rat, uh, etc. You just you name it. This deck 100% <laughs> struggles against those cards. Um, but thanks to Scrap Dragon, uh, we're able to clear them in order to help ensure that we can go for game a lot more easily. And then in addition to the Scrap Dragon, we're going to be playing two Stardust Dragons. Uh, if you can't go for game and you know you can't, you're going to make one of these just to help ensure that your board doesn't get wiped on the next turn by Dark Hole, Mirror Forest, or whatever. Um, not much to say. We played two because we're able to make one the hard way and we're also able to make one through Starlight Road. 
Uh, they're just really good cards, so two is pretty much the standard for this type of deck. And then for our final synchro, we're going to be playing one Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Uh, much like Scrap Dragon, this helps us get rid of over annoying cards that we can't easily run over by battle. And then Trishula has the added bonus of being able to get rid of cards from the hand or graveyard. So it's able to hit key pieces like Gores or Necrogarna or um, Battle Fader, Trigodia, whatever. Uh, the card's just really good and it's really easy to make as long as you open up an effect bailer and you haven't used it because the gadget plus offering plus bailer is an insta trish so <laughs> yeah it's, it's just in, insanely broken how this deck is able to operate thanks to ultimate offering and that's it for the synchros and next up we have the xyz portion so this is one of the few decks that is actually able to take advantage of wind up zenmeister as it only needs two level fours, and then this card also gains 300 attack for each Xyz material it has. And since it has two Xyz materials typically, that means it's going to be 2500 attack, which is pretty huge, honestly, for the most part. Um, and then it also has like an additional effect where you can like book one of your own monsters and then flip it into face up attack position, but that never really comes up. The only time that I would see that actually be relevant is if like one of your monsters got fiendish chained, I guess. So you just book that and then you reflip it for the next turn, but uh, you're basically just attacking with this. So yeah, not much to say. Uh, we're also be playing two Steel Swarm Roaches. Uh, it's Steel Swarm Roach. We don't play Thunder King and this is the next best thing. You detach one and your opponent basically can't summon any big boss monster that's level five or higher. And then lastly, we're gonna be playing three number 39 Utopias. Uh, much like uh, Wind Up Zenmeister, it's also 2,500 attack. But it has the added bonus of just being able to detach one to ensure that your, mon your opponent's monsters can't attack. And being a 2500 beat stake is really good. Unfortunately, the Xyz pool is incredibly small and these are the only three that we can actually play. But there's still more than enough to get the job done. And with that, that's the Offering Gadget deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!